we dive into Unit 3, though, I do want to cover some basics. And we're not going to cover this whole paper today um, necessarily uh, all at one time. We're going to look at a few things, come away from it, look at something else, and then come back to it um, as we need to. You got page 30, your Unit 3 cover page. It's that pink paper that has all of the vocab words um, and the terms to know. Um, it also lists the standards in case you're curious what we're learning. Um, and then now this is page 31. So the first five questions on this paper are stuff that you technically should know. Um, granted, it might have been a while since you've done something like it, so you may be stuck on it. I would like you to try the first five right now on your own. Try the first five questions on your own. If you don't know something right off the top of your head, read it twice. If you still don't know it, then move on to the next question. So let's look at these together and let's see um, how well on point you were. Um, and if you, if you were not able to answer it, maybe now it'll ring a bell. So the very first one says, is this point, negative two, three, a solution to the equation? Do you remember how to check if something's a solution? What? Louder. Plug it in. That's all you have to do. Um, it probably threw you off because it was an xy point instead of just saying like, is, is x equals negative 2 a solution? But it's the same concept as if I had just given you an x and said, is this the answer? All you have to do is plug it in. So this is a way, um, like a if you're taking a standardized test, which we, we don't in here, we don't have an EOC anymore, but if you were taking a standardized test and it just said it, which of the following is a solution to the equation, you really don't even have to solve the equation. You could just look at the answer choices and plug them in and then find the one that works. Um, how do you know when it works? When the left side equals the right side. That's how you know it works. So I'm going to plug x in right here. I got negative 2. Pop the minus, plug y in, that gives me 3. Bring the right side down. What is negative 2 minus 3? Negative 5. And does negative 5 equal negative 1? No. So the answer is no, it's not a solution. And it was as simple as just plugging it in. Bless you. The next question is probably the most challenging of the five, and I think it's the way it's worded. Um, it says, make a table of ordered pairs for y equals x plus 3 by finding the y values if the domain is, and then it gives us a set of numbers. First of all, everybody knows what a table looks like, like your x and y table, t-chart, remember that, t-table, t-chart. Um, we don't really have a lot of room. You could go over there and do it on the far right. I'm going to make mine going out to the right um, since I don't have a lot of room. So I'm going to make a T table, T chart, and it says by finding the Y values, which means we are literally finding, it's telling you, you're going to find the Y values, which means they should be giving me the X values. But they didn't use the word x, they said domain, which means x values. So now that you see this kind of decoded, it's not a bad question, right? They're giving you x, they've given you the equation, they're asking you to plug these in to get y. So let's make our list. We got negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And then plug the, those x values in and get the y values. So the equation is just y equals x plus 3. Uh, 
trying to go in a building to the two, like 100, 104th floor, let's say I'm in Atlanta at a skyscraper, and I need to go to the 104th floor, floor. I got to walk into the building first, right, before I can get to the elevator with me. So you got to walk in, you got to move horizontally before you can move vertically. So think of it that way. Um, the first number is right or left. The second number is up or down. You always hover your pencil right here. You don't make a point. I'm just showing you like if you're watching the video because I've got several that are going to have to watch it um, to know where I'm pointing. But you, make a, you hover your pencil over the center, which is called the origin, and then you make your movement. So we're going left five, up one from the center. So left five, up one, and then you plot it. Here, this means there is no right or left movement at all. And we just go up three. So I'm going to stay put, and then I'm going to go up three. Did you get those? And now we've got to draw a horizontal line or a vertical line. Horizontal has the word horizon in it. Think about um, if you've ever been to the beach or if you've ever been to like a, a big open field. Um, if you look off into the distance, mainly at the beach is where you really can see this, or lake. Um, the horizon is the imaginary line created by the ocean with the sky. And it runs horizontally, hence the name. The horizon runs horizontally. So that's the way you remember that a horizontal line runs left and right. A vertical line runs up and down. Um, the rest of this is on the on the bottom is referring to slope. We're not going to worry about that just yet. We'll come back to it. Like I said, we're going to bounce around with this sheet. Okay, you have in front of you the transformation book. Um, little tip, you may want to take it out of your notebook because we are going to open it up flat and draw in it. It's just easier that way. Um, you'll notice the top of it says Unit 1. That's because this unit used to be Unit 1. And then for whatever reason, the state decided, oh, we're going to make it Unit 3 now. So let me show you how to turn that 1 into a 3. Um, yours says like this, Unit 1, right? Take that and just make it bold and build a box and then put a three on the inside. There you go. So take the one and just turn it into a box and then put a three on the inside. And you don't have to do it that way. If you want to just mark one out and make a three, that's fine. Um, but I just made mine into a bold box and then I put a three on the inside. So what I like about this unit is one is short and sweet. I appreciate short units because I feel like if the students don't get annoyed with, oh, we're still in that unit. Um, two, there's little algebra. So this is like anybody can do this. This is just drawing and counting. Okay. 
of three, the entire unit on transformations is in this booklet. So this booklet is showing you where we're going for the next week with transformations. Um, what we're going to do is look at the booklet to learn each new transformation, and then we'll move to practice. Look at the booklet, practice. Look at the booklet, practice. Okay. Um, so that's one of the reasons why I love this unit. Several reasons. If you look at the cover of the booklet, you are going to notice that it lays out for you the unit of transformations. We've got translations, reflections, rotations, mapping, and then we have down here dilation. The word transformation means a polygon is undergoing some type of change. There's different types of change that can occur. There's a translation, which means it's simply, look at the picture to give you an idea. It's simply sliding, right? There is a reflection, which means it is flipping. There is a rotation, which means it's spinning. And then there is a dilation, which means what? What does it look like <coughs> dilation means? Help me out, somebody. Gets bigger, and what we're going to learn is it could also get smaller. Um, a lot of people think dilation means only get bigger, but your eyes can dilate small if you step outside and the sun's really bright. Your pupils get very, very, very tiny. That's a dilation. So, yes, dilation means change size. You will notice that the only one that changes the size of it is dilation, which is down here at the bottom. And I even made a note. It's going to be dis discussed in the next unit. The ones we are going to practice right now, translate, reflect, rotate, are what's called isometric or rigid transformations. And that's because when I take the shape and I do this, the shape stays the same shape, same size. Does that make sense? Notice that these pictures, the word has not changed in size or shape, right? I would like you to make the front of your booklet match mine with the um, little description of rigid transformations. We're going to start with translations, which is pages one and two. So once you've made the front of your booklet match mine, open up your booklet and just gently crease it. Um, or actually, yours is not staple. I had to staple mine. Mine's years of use, so I had to staple mine. Yours is not staple, which means it'll just open flat. Just hold it together so you don't get your book out of order. We're going to look at translations. If I had to say which one is the easiest of the types of transformations we're going to learn, it would be translations because you're literally picking the shape up and you're sliding it right, left, up, or down. That's it. You're just counting. And if you know how to graph coordinate points, then you know how to translate um, a shape. Everybody good? Okay, we've got a couple of things to learn before we dive right in. Um, and the first one's going to take the longest, and then I'll turn you loose on the next example, and you'll realize this doesn't take long at all. But that very first one, we've got some vocab words. All right, everybody, stay with me. So first, the vocab word that you need to know is pre-image. <coughs> Pre-image 
image is the word to describe the shape before anything is done to it. Okay? I want you to think of pre. You already know what pre means. Like a prequel means the story before whatever movie, you know, the, the prequel to A Quiet Place is a movie that's coming out. And, it, and it's the um, story of the day that it was quiet. Right? You've never seen A Quiet Place. Um, Pre-image, it's the shape before anything is done to it. So this shape right here is the pre-image. Make yours match mine. That is the pre-image, the first one. we take this pre-image and we translate it according to the way it asks me to, we can't name our new shape ABC because then we would have two triangle ABCs on the same graph and that would be confusing. So after we translate it, we're going to call it triangle and then you see these little apostrophes and there's supposed to be one right here. You could make one. Those little apostrophes, they have a vocab word. No, it's not apostrophe, because that's just a mouthful. It is prime. A prime, B prime, C prime. Or what I like to say is A, B, C prime. Because they're all going to be prime. So that little prime symbol means something's been done to the original A, B, C to give you the A prime, B prime, C prime. Okay, stay with me. All right, what are we doing here? We're translating, the paper says to, and then look right here. Do you see this fancy language? We've got parentheses X, Y, then big arrow. We've got parentheses X plus six comma Y. This is called the written rule called the written rule, which is a fancy for word for formula. It's the formula. If I say, hey, I need you to translate this, you would say, okay, what's the written rule? What's the formula? Meaning, what do you want me to do? You're going to notice, and you don't have to highlight this if you don't want to, but every time we have the written rule, the beginning part of the written rule is that, and then the last part of the written rule is where you actually see what's taking place. So you really don't have to pay attention to this first part because this is saying, take all your X and Ys, the arrow means do this, and then you come over here and you read it. This is telling me, take X and add six which means if I was plotting X, it would mean I'm going what direction? If it's plus six, I'm going right six. And then notice Y stays the same, which means am I moving up and down at all? Not at all. If I was going down one, what would it say right here? What do you think? It'd say Y minus one. If I was going up 5, what do you think it would say? It would say y plus 5. So we're going to, now the first time you do this, I want you to write it out the way I'm going to do it. Then I don't expect you to ever do it this way again, because this is really the long way. But this is so that your mind can see what you're actually doing, okay? I want you to come over here. We've got... A, B, C, we have the coordinate points of this pre-image. We are going to take X, negative 4, we're going to add 6, we're going to copy Y. We're going to take X, negative 1, we're going to add 6, we're going to copy Y. You see what I'm doing here? Whoops. We're going to take X, negative 4, we're going to add 6, we're going to copy Y. So I'm really showing my work here, and I don't necessarily expect you to do this every time. I only want you to do it on this one page. 
normally I would expect you to just be able to add in your head, I'm adding six. But if you look back on this one day and you're like, I don't remember how I got these numbers, this is the reason why you write it down at least one time to pull out. And now let's clean it up. Negative four plus six is what? I'm just going to draw another arrow. Six minus four. Two. Copy the y. That is my a prime. Negative one plus six is what? Five. Copy the y. That's my b prime. Negative four plus six. Copy the y. That's my c prime. Now I'm going to plot those new points on the same graph. So you can see why we practiced this on the basics worksheet. I'm going to plot a prime. So it's two comma negative one. So from the center, I'm going to go right to down one and I'm going to label a prime. Now I'm going to copy b prime. b prime is five comma one. So right five up one. Then C prime is two comma five. Right two up five. And now you can see why I gave you the clues. We have one more vocab word, and that's it for all the vocab words, really. The shape after you've done something to it has a vocab word. It is called the image, which is kind of annoying in my opinion because you got to remember the pre-image and the image, and they're totally different. But remember, pre, think of prequel or pre-workout. It means before the action takes place. So the pre-image, look at the difference here, because when we, when we practice this, if I was to give you a graph with them both already graphed, and I said to you, hey, what happened here? You would have to know, did it go right or did it go left? Because there's a big difference between those directions. The way you learn which one was the pre image is the one that is just plain letters. Think of pre, the letter P for plain, like plain letters, no apostrophes at all. So this is the pre-image, which tells me that the shape went right, um, and then you would pick any two points that match, like A and A prime, and you count. You went one, two, three, four, five, six, you went right six. Okay. Um, slide to the right and try that example on page two. Slide to the right and try the example on page two. have to show all of your work when you're actually applying the translation. This time you can just add or subtract in your head and write what you get. I would like you to put on your paper the coordinate points labeled as A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime, and then to draw the shape.
as you're finishing plotting the points, drawing the graph, um, don't look up here if you're not done. Don't look. Don't cheat. Just finish. <laughs> then look up here and check. Um, did you get that shape and those coordinate points? This was a translation sliding right three down six. Now there's a lot of ways I could ask you questions from this one picture. One, I could ask you to follow the written rule and tell me the new coordinate points. Two, I could ask you to plot it. Three, I could give it to you plotted and I could say what happened here. You would have to look at this picture and you have to find the letters that are plain and say to yourself, okay, this is the pre-image, this is the one it lands on, then you would have to say, what is it doing? It's definitely going right, and then it's definitely going down, but you would have to count it, right? The way you count it out is like B would be matching with B prime. So it's going right one, two, three, and then it's going down one, two, three, four, five, six. So the written rule would be x plus three, y minus six. All in all, I need you to remember that isometric transformations form congruent figures. This means they have the shape, same shape, same size as I'm losing y'all. I forgot it's Wednesday, so 9-12. I'm going to give you this piece of paper. Your practice is not a delta map. It's actual paper. Um, you're plotting the picture, or you're telling me the rule. We call this page 33, I believe. As you go get your phone, please drop your, I'm sorry, drop your ruler.